Hello everyone, my name is Wes Merelda, you can call me Wes, and welcome to Wonder Wes Gaming. It seems like only a bit ago, I was making my way downtown. Uh, making my way over to the Dragon Isles for the very first time. But evidently, it's been nearly four whole months since World of Warcraft's Dragonflight expansion launched. Time flies when you're dragon riding. I hope you've managed to add many new Battle Pet companions to your journal. I'm inching ever closer to the what can I say they love me achievement for collecting 1600 unique pets and I've been eager for more pets any way I can get them. So now that World of Warcraft has announced the release date for patch 10.0.7, Return to the Forbidden Reach, I'm very excited to announce that it's looking like we have 18 new pets coming our way when the patch launches on March 21st, 2023. Before we dive into the details of all the new battle pets, let's talk about some other pet-related updates coming in patch 10.0.7. First up, when Dragonflight launched, we had a woeful lack of pet battle world quests available, with only one world quest per day, which means not nearly enough consistent sources for polished pet charms within the Dragon Isles. This made it difficult for collectors to rely on current content to farm the charms needed to buy the newer vendor pets, like the incredibly cute doggo pet Scout, among others. But I'm happy to let you know that with the launch of Patch 1007, we'll be seeing five pet battle world quests up each day in the Dragon Isles, one in each of the five zones. This means daily chances for polished pet charms without leaving the Dragon Isles. Thank you, Blizzard! Next up is an addition that will help make a secret pet just a bit more obtainable. Shortly after the launch of Dragonflight, the Snowclaw Cub was found hidden as a primal bear cub in the Azure Span, and it was discovered that it could be collected by offering it some Hornswog hunks and a honey snack. But you could only befriend it if you had the title Honorary Dryad available, which was a temporary title reward from completing a short questline in Veldraken. This questline had no known ties to the Azure Span or the Snowclaw Cub at all, certainly nothing to point you in its direction upon completion. So if you had completed this questline before finding out about the Snowclaw Cub, it was likely that by the time you found out about it and had procured the required materials, your title was already gone and the pet would not take your friendly gesture, making it permanently unavailable to you without bringing in an alt to complete the quest again. With the 1007 patch, Blizzard has kind of sort of corrected this issue by making the temporary title re-obtainable with a new set of rotating weekly quests on offer from the original quest giver in Veldraken. Once you have the required materials in hand, report to Thalendra and complete the quest Sylvan Sucker to become an honorary dryad for another limited amount of time. And I mean really limited. As of the recording of this video, the title only stays as long as you're logged in and can even be removed by taking so much as a Dragon Isle's Waygate to get to the Azure Span faster. So be sure to make a beeline for the Honey and Hunk Hungry Snowclaw Cub just as soon as you unlock that title. Lastly, there were four Elemental Spirit pets obtainable at Dragonflight's launch, which required use of an engineering item called the Zap Throttle Soul Inhaler. These pets have a rare chance to drop from the docile souls you receive after successfully caging an elite elemental mob soul using the inhaler. This was a huge time-intensive pain to grind, not to mention a little dicey for certain specs as the soul inhaler had a 15 minute cooldown and to successfully cage a soul for a chance at the pet, you had to maintain the items cast while the mob died. With patch 10.0.7, They've updated it so that after completing a now four second channel with the Zap Throttle Soul Inhaler on a targeted mob while it's still alive, its soul will be successfully caged if it dies within 30 seconds of the completion of the cast. Added to that, you can move while casting the channel, so getting out of harm's way won't break the cast. And the Soul Inhaler now only has a five minute cooldown after a capture instead of the 15. These changes do make it a lot less frustrating for classes without combat pets or dot spells, as the chance of having the channel interrupted won't be as great as it was. The only caveat, and it's a big one in my opinion, is that the encaged souls you capture are unique and still have their 15 minute cooldown, meaning you cannot sit and farm, let's say, earth elementals in one area every five minutes. You would have to go find another family of elementals to capture, and on and on and on, until the original 15 minutes is up. 
which makes these changes in the class I'd like to call so close Blizzard, but not quite. Maybe they'll keep iterating on this in the future, but for now, best of luck to those of you still farming those pets. I hope these changes make it much easier for you. But now, let's move into new content and dive into the 18 new battle pets coming in the Return to the Forbidden Reach patch. There are three battle pets acquirable from vendors throughout the Dragon Isles, new to patch 1007. Bucky, the adorable baby Timbertooth pet, can be purchased from Turek, the Iskara Tuskar renowned envoy located in Morkut Village in the Forbidden Reach at coordinates 34.2, 60.0, just to the left of the inn for 25,000 Elemental Overflow. This is the currency you may already be familiar with that dropped during Elemental Storm events. But worry not, collectors. While 25,000 seems like a ridiculous amount, within the Forbidden Reach, it will be dropping from nearly everything you loot in copious amounts. So the most ardent of grinders out there among us might be able to have this cutie in a mere matter of days. Shaggy, the long-eared feral rabbit, has a chance to drop from the Sack of Oddities, which can be repeatedly purchased for 2,000 elemental overflow from cataloger Dela, the dragon scale expedition renowned envoy located at 34.3, 60.0, also in Morkut Village. My testing on the PTR had me go through at least 20 of these sacks with sadly no sign of Shaggy. While I'm hoping that RNG luck is with us all once the patch goes live, at a cost of 2,000 overflow per sack, this shouldn't be a patch long effort. And lastly, we have Driftling, a snow elemental pet, which can be purchased for a mere 150 Dragon Isle supplies upon hitting Exalted Reputation with the Winter Pelt Furbolg down in the Azure Span. If you've done every quest you could find and up to now you've been stuck at unfriendly with this reputation, fear not. If you've completed your Sojourner of the Azure Span meta achievement, upon logging in once the patch goes live, you should receive a mail from Sonova Snowden inviting you down to the Azure Span to become more friendly with this Furbolg tribe. This reputation is tied to a grindable language learning system where you learn the Furbolg language by looting and turning in tokens to Sonova Snowden, which in turn gives you proficiency points in the language, up to a max of 100 points. There's the Liberated Furbolg Artifacts, which give one proficiency point for every five tokens you turn in, or the rarer Intact Scribe Sticks, which give one proficiency point per token. These tokens don't directly earn your reputation, but for every 25 proficiency points you earn, new quests will become available that will yield the reputation increases. Kazi, located at 65.8, 12.7 in Winterpelt Hollow, offers a variety of purchasable goods at the various reputation levels, with the Driftling pet being the final option at Exalted. Rare mobs are going to be sprinkled all across the Forbidden Reach, and several of them have a daily per character chance to drop the following battle pets. Ashenwing, a fiery phoenix pet, has a chance to drop from Bone Sifter Marwok, located in the Skyfox Den at coordinates 43.6, 60.5. Scruffles, the blonde-haired, green-eyed baby mammoth pet, has a chance to drop from Vraken the Hunter. Maybe a reference to Marvel's Craven the Hunter? In any case, Vraken is located in a cave near 58.2, 48.2. This kind of rhymes with Vraken, but Waken, the very blue phoenix pet, is next up, and it has a chance to drop from Warden Entrix, located in the depths of the Warcrish, deep underground, in an area absolutely dripping with elites. The entrance is at 51.9, 59.9, and Warden Entrix is way down in it at 43.0, 84.7. And finally, Lovey, a cute, cuddly Otic pet, has a chance to drop from Lutrok. Lutrok is one of the hidden rares in the Forbidden Reach that only spawns when a player triggers the encounter by using a new epic profession item called an Artisan Curio. There are many rares on the Forbidden Reach who have this spawn mechanic, and the curios required are unique to each rare and are tied to a specific profession, everything from alchemy to fishing. But there's also a little RNG involved in that the reagents required to craft or deposit using the profession are random drops from mobs or from gathering activities around the new zone. For more details on how this system works, 
I highly suggest watching the video I've linked in the description below for a better overview on the Artisan Curio system as a whole. But for Lovey in particular, you need to have an epic artisan curio called the Sparkling Spice Pouch to summon Lutrock. This curio is crafted through cooking, which is great news for pet collectors because it's accessible to basically everyone, so long as they have 50 skill points in Dragon Isle's cooking and 10 artisans metal to purchase the spice pouch recipe from Trader Hagarth in Morkut Village. To craft the epic item to summon Lutrock, You'll need the Lackluster Spices Artisan Curio Crafting Reagent. This is a blue quality item that has a random chance to drop from mobs around the Forbidden Reach. So I hope you like grinding. I'll be doing plenty of this anyway for Elemental Overflow, so I'm cool with it. If you just can't get the darn spices to drop, or you just don't want to learn to cook and can't find anyone who's listed a group for Lutrock, check your local auction house. These epic Artisan Curios are not soul bound which gives folks with unwanted extras the ability to make a profit on them. But fair warning, at the launch of the patch, these will likely be pretty pricey. Sadly, having someone else craft you a sparkling spice pouch from your lackluster spices drop using the crafting order system doesn't appear to be an option like most of the other epic profession reagents. I think this must be because, unlike the primary professions, cooking is available to anyone in the game. In any case, once you have the epic sparkling spice pouch in hand, Open your map while in the Forbidden Reach and look for an icon denoting the location of the Spiceless Stew event area. I found it at 55.7, 51.5, located right next to this Morkut villager, but it could be placed in any of three different locations. Simply click on the Spiceless Stew to summon Lutrock, giving you and anyone else around a chance at lovey. And one last note. Even though these profession rares have a lot less health than the normal Forbidden Reach zone rares, I still suggest trying to list the rare in the group finder before you summon. It's just a nice thing to do. When patch 10.0.7 launches, we will have several new pet battles available throughout the Dragon Isles, but we'll also have four new pet battle bosses who can actually be captured. Flo, Tremblor, Vortex, and Wildfire are legendary elemental bosses scattered around the smaller outer islands of the Forbidden Reach. A pet battle world quest will appear when they are up, denoting their location. The cool thing about these particular pet battle bosses is that the elementals have a variable level of difficulty that can be altered. The bosses begin at legendary difficulty, but defeating nearby storm touch pets in the vicinity will temporarily reduce their difficulty first to epic, then to rare. They will stay in these levels of difficulty for a certain amount of time, I think it's around 20 minutes or so, before popping back up to legendary difficulty. If you defeat the elemental while in its rare form, denoted by the buff Rare Intensity, you will receive a battle pet version of it for your collection. That's so cool! Flo, located over on Ebon Landing at 89.4, 60.2, rewards the Waterstorm Essence, which summons the pet Flo. Tremblor, located on Warder Solace at 67.2, 12.4, rewards the Earthstorm Essence, which summons the pet Tremblor. Vortex, located on Winglord's Perch at 18.4, 13.2, rewards the Airstorm Essence, which summons, stay with me, the pet Vortex. And Wildfire, located on Slyvern's Roost at 13.1, 53.7, rewards the Firestorm Essence, which summons, you guessed it, the pet wildfire. I found these pet battles to be pretty easy to take down, especially in their rare form. If you need any help picking out a team, I highly suggest heading over to Zufu's Pet Guides, where contributors have already started posting helpful strategies. That link is in the description below. One of the main activities in the Forbidden Reach involves delving into the Zascara Vaults, these are randomized, treasure-filled instances on a weekly rotation. Exploring these vaults to their fullest will require Ziskira Vault Keys, which can be acquired beyond their one-time weekly quests by killing rares, looting forbidden hoard treasure chests, and can even sometimes be found within the Sack of Oddities I mentioned earlier. These keys allow access to the many locked doors within each week's vault that hold a variety of items, including primordial stones used in the new Onyx Annulet Ring, Elemental Overflow, Gold, Flavor Items, Toys, Amount, and yes, 7 Battle Pets. With only a few exceptions, 
These pets all may have various sources within the Zascara vaults. Let's go through some of these known sources now. Barrel Mane, the aptly named blue-maned baby Vorkin, was found stuck in a web. Brightfeather, the red-winged, long-beaked bird, was found in a hardened chest. Bunbo, the light brown-haired baby mammoth, was brought to safety after being busted out of a locked container by the repaired malfunctioning protector. Emma, the green-tinted lionfish, was found while fishing from the disgusting vat and also can be acquired by applying some refreshing water to the, uh, not-quite-alive fish in the unkept aquarium. Cobalt, the flowery, blue-spined porcupine, was found in its inanimate form, crystallized solid. Applying some lay-infused crystals found elsewhere in the vault helped reanimate it. Patos, the violet-colored lionfish, has also been brought back to life by applying refreshing water to the unkept aquarium, and I bet it's just as likely you'd manage to fish one out of a disgusting vat if you're lucky as well. The last pet available within the Zascara vaults is the gilded mecha frog. This golden mechanical froglet can rarely be found within the tattered gift package, which can be purchased from the prototype Tinkertron, who can usually be found somewhere in the vaults using Neltharian gift tokens. These gift tokens can be found within the Zascara vaults in treasure chests, through fighting certain mobs, and even lying on random surfaces within the vaults, provided you have the energized circlet buff and can see them. Hopefully you have better luck than me. I went through at least a dozen of these gift packages on the PTR with no sign of the frog pet. With that being said, it's highly likely that not all the pets will be obtainable in one weekly delve into the Zascara vaults, so keep at it in future weeks. And also remember that if you're in the middle of exploring and run out of keys or simply run out of time, you can leave to farm more keys or whatnot and return any time before the next weekly reset to pick up where you left off. Okay, I lied when I said there were 18 new pets coming to Dragonflight with patch 1007. I'm sorry, you got me. There's actually a 19th pet that's technically available about a month after the launch, but because it's not directly available in-game, I thought it best to sideline it a bit here. WoW's Recruit a Friend program is getting another refresh after about three years with the renowned Explorer's Rewards, adding a slew of new cosmetic items for players who either have friends who want to come back after a long break, or who want to try out WoW for the very first time, or for players who have enough money or gold lying around to buy game time for a second account. Within these updated rewards, we're getting a new battle pet, the Volatile Self-Driving Toolbox Pet. This mechanical battle pet is, thankfully, available after your recruited friend or second account pays for and completes only one month of game time. I'm still hoping that at some point in the future, we see the older, retired recruiter friend pet rewards come back into the game somehow. I think the trading post would be an excellent format to bring those back for folks who may have missed out because I really need that golden piggy. Come on, Blizzard, please. That's all the battle pets we know to be coming in the Return to the Forbidden Reach content patch. Which of them are you most looking forward to acquiring? And if you're watching this after the patch is released and have already managed to nab one of the Zascara vault pets through a method I left out, share your experience in the comments. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I hope to be bringing you full details on Patch 10.1's amazing new battle pets sometime soon. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter, where I post my WoW-related updates and other stupid stuff regularly. You can find that link below, as well as the other resources I mentioned earlier in the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.